Watch Symposium. I'm Austin. Continuing our discussion of the Tudor Iconaut, we get to the third video. If you haven't seen the previous videos, links in the description. We've talked about form, function, value, value retention. In this video, we talk about the fourth factor, usability in our five-factor model. All right, the Iconaut is a jack of all trades, but perhaps it's a king of none. And that's probably why you don't find it in the Tudor catalog anymore. And you've never found anything like it in the Rolex catalog. It goes against the model of what Rolex tries to do. Let's go back to 1954, the Submariner. That was the idea of René P. Genere. He worked at Rolex. He was a scuba diver, a sportsman, and he had the idea for essentially a weekend watch. Now, yes, the sub is geared towards divers, but it was a strategy to sell more watches. Think about the guy wearing his date just 24 seven. Well, you introduce this sporty watch, this watch that's perfect for the beach, a great weekend watch. Well, he's gonna want that watch. And Rolex started tying in functions to the personality, character, and identity of these watches. You have the dive watch, the deep diving watch when you're in the diving bell. You are at the racetrack watch, your watch for scientists, your international pilot's watch, your domestic pilot's watch, your rich guy on the boat watch, your rich guy on a boat in a regatta watch, your sir, I have you know, I'm the biggest twat at this party watch, your yeah, he's the biggest twat at this party, but I'm the biggest badass and I'm gonna leave with somebody's girlfriend watch, the average man's watch, or the shit, that guy left this party with my girlfriend, I'm about to go home to my wife now, watch. Or the, honey, this party's amazing. I think we've made it, minimalist watch. All of these watches have a personality and oftentimes it is tied into the function. And so you look at something like this, multifunction, and where does it fit? I love to talk to the person that designed this watch and ask, why a fixed metal bezel? Why all the functions? Who is this watch made for? What situation is this watch made for? He's likely not working at Rolex or Tudor anymore. Probably got himself fired thanks to this thing. He's probably drinking himself silly at some chateau in Switzerland, but I'd like to saddle up to him and say, why? Explain the Iconaut to me. And very likely he would say, it was a watch for everything, every situation. And I got fired for it. That's a really interesting aspect of this watch. It defies any genre. It's sort of a mystery what it's for, who it was made for, who's supposed to be wearing it. You get no clue from the name Iconaut. I mean, what does that even mean? So it's odd that it ever showed up, period. It basically seems to be the only Swiss army knife watch that Tudor or Rolex ever made. And like a Swiss army knife, you can always find a better tool. I mean, you don't want to use the scissors on a Swiss army knife. You can find a better toothpick. You can find a better nail file, a better screwdriver, a better blade. But anybody who loves Swiss army knives, and I do, I always carry one with me, will tell you the best tool for the job is the one you have with you. And that's why this watch is so usable. Sure, you can find a better travel watch with a rotating bezel or a jump hour hand. You can find a better beach watch. You can find a better chronograph. You can certainly find a better dress watch, but this is doable and usable in all situations. That's where it shines. If you're a one watch guy and you're looking for that does everything watch, you're going to want a Swiss army knife watch. So this is what it is. There's that aspect of the watch when you're talking about usability, usability in certain situations, the watch versus the world, the watch versus the environment. But you've also got the socio-situational usability of this watch. And look, if you're looking to flex with this watch, probably ain't gonna happen, all right? If you roll up at a party and it's a fancy party, nobody's really gonna be too impressed by this watch unless they're a serious watch nerd. But, you know, it's not gonna really hold its own against gold Daytonas and, and blinged out pieces and even the contemporary or even the pre-ceramic steel sports Rolex watches. So among people, social situations, you're not gonna be able to flex much, but 
there's the safety aspect. And if you are looking for a good travel watch that doesn't stress you out, this is a great option because it has enough value, and we've talked about value, that it makes you appreciate the watch. It hurts a little bit to get it, three grand, right? It's gotta hurt before you appreciate it, that you wanna take care of, that you wanna to pay to have service, that has enough intrinsic value that it'll last and people will wanna take care of it and have it last. But it's not so much that you're gonna be worried about losing it, something happening to it, being robbed or hurt or killed for it. You know, that's an aspect of Rolex ownership. Not if you're in, say, Japan. I mean, where your blingiest Rolex here and you'll be absolutely fine. But if you're a one watch guy, you're not gonna be able to take that blingy watch that you can safely wear in Japan to other countries, developing countries at night in the street, hiking across Africa. So this is a watch that you could, you're not gonna stress about losing this watch. Now, I don't think you should wear any watch that you couldn't recover from if it were to disappear from your wrist, whether that's financially or emotionally. And when it comes to my Rolex watches, could I recover financially? Well, I didn't pay the going rate for my watches, so it wouldn't be too bad in that sense, but replacing them would be pretty hard. More concerning to me is the emotional damage. I mean, I wouldn't ever be able to truly replace them. And so, look, don't get me wrong, I'd hate to lose this watch, but I'd be okay, all right? I'd be able to replace it. It wouldn't be too expensive. And emotionally, I love the watch, but again, I could replace it. And so it makes for a great balance of usability, yet value. You appreciate it, but you don't fixate on it and worry about it and let it stress you out. So when it comes to that aspect of usability, this has got a lot of it. So there you go. It's a usable watch. Are there more usable watches for certain situations? Absolutely. I mean, that's what Rolex and Tudor and most watch brands specialize in a watch for a perfect situation. But if you're looking for that jack of all trades, Swiss Army knife watch, well, look no further than this. It might not do as well as other watches in a particular situation, but the best watch for the situation is the one you have with you. And in terms of functions and the usability and the versatility of this watch, this watch has it. Let me know what you think. Take care. Thanks for watching. Next up, we talk about the X factor of this watch. See you next time.